Welcome back to the Learning Layer segment. On this segment, we are continuing to follow Joe Kerrigan as he gets ready for his CISSP. Today, we're going to talk about his studies in Domain 4. So, Joe, you're basically halfway there. Halfway there now. Halfway yep. there. How did uh, Domain 4 go? Domain 4 was good. Uh, a lot of information in Domain 4. Oh, yeah. It's a big um, one. But it's not, you know, it's not all foreign to me. Sure. Uh, you know, like I've... I've been. You know, I started off in this uh, in in the tech world as a help desk network administrator guy. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm pretty good with communications and 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 networks. So I, I get it. Um, and you know, being in security for as long as I have been, one of the key things I understand is that every time there's any kind of interface between two different things, it doesn't matter what they are, mm -hmm. uh, that, is a, a, that is part of the attack surface. So uh, when you start looking at things like, the, uh, like these layering models for, for networking, yeah. even the spaces between those, uh, those different layers of the model is an opportunity to insert yourself as, an, as a malicious actor. Mm -hmm. So actually, if, if you don't mind, we can go down that rabbit hole talking about um, those models because I think those are some of the common areas that a lot of students struggle with um, when they're actually studying. So what's your strategy for memorizing the layers of the OSI model, for example? Actually, this was not a problem okay. because uh, at my first job, uh, somebody somebody gave me a mnemonic Okay. That, and I can still see the guy's name. He was his name was Scott, and he. Told, this is how good I can remember who told me this. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. This is for you, Scott. Right. It was please do not throw sausage pizza away. Nice. And that's from layer one all the way up to layer yep. seven. Yep. Right. So that's uh, physical data link network uh, transport uh, session presentation application. Nice. And I have known that for. 20 some years. Wow. Because of Scott. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank my you, first, Scott. My first, uh, my first job in the field. That's awesome. And for those of you who think top down, I have one, which is all people should take notes during physics. Ah. And we're, oh, look, it's a podcast about learning. We got to talk, right. talk about taking notes, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that's all people should take notes during physics. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you heard? Have you heard my uh, mnemonic for the Great Lakes? No. It's it. uh, Lisa likes licking lettuce lightly <laughs> for Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, uh, and Lake Ontario. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I, in, in 20 years, I won't, I, I won't forget that. <laughs> right. um, so, but you know what's interesting about this exam is knowing the layer and the name is not enough, right? So right. that's what makes this test hard. You got to apply the information. So for example, on CC, they might ask you, what is layer two? Right. Or like, where, what layer does this protocol operate at? That's just like a flashcard question, right? Yep. The CSSP is different and unique in that they're going to ask you to apply the information. So Joe, let's do this in real time. Okay. Here's a, here's a common C CSSP type question. At what layer does a stateful firewall operate at? Okay, so uh, let's see. The, the stateful firewall. So what's interesting is you have to know like three things to get that question right, right? You got to right. know what a, stateful uh, what a stateful firewall is. You have to know what the OSI levels are. And you have to kind of make connections across all the different firewalls. So a packet filtering firewall is that one that's at layer three, right? Right, because all it does is it looks at the source IP and says, like th th that. That's the rule list, right? That's right. it. Are you on the list or not? Very yeah, simple, very basic, not important. smart. You can think of a packet filtering firewall as in Linux. Uh, well, actually, was it's not on Linux. I'm sorry, it's on OpenBSD. PF packet filtering firewall. There you go. And then the step up from that is a stateful firewall. Mm -hmm which can 
is a little bit smarter because it can track the state of the connection. And what are we talking about when we talk about the state of connection? The TCP three-way right. handshake state, yep. right? Whether it's been secured and, and connected. So, for example, let me ask you another follow-up okay. question, Joe. When a TCP connection mm -hmm. has not been fully connected and it's a half of a connection, we call it, what type of attack could that indicate? You could be suffering a sin flood attack. There you go. So a, sta a stateful firewall can look at that right. and say, this is a suspicious, unusual connection. There's a lot of them. I'm going to block this type of traffic. So that's what it does. Now, my next question is, at what layer does the TCP and UDP protocols operate at? They're on the transport layer. Which is layer four. Which is layer four, correct. Yeah, layer I could four. do the, please do not throw, yeah, four. Right. Right. I would argue the most true answer is four. Because that's where all of that, like, connection and, and state connection analysis is happening. Right. And then the last thing, just to, to um, bring this firewall discussion home, what is it about firewalls at layer seven? Like, what, what, what's happening at that layer that makes them unique from some of the other ones that are lower? They're actually digging into the packet, into the contents of the packets. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're actually looking if there are maybe indicators of compromise in mm -hmm. the packets. Some of these may actually have uh, certificates on the inside of the firewall that allow them to, uh, uh, to decrypt the HTTPS traffic mm -hmm. or any of the other encrypted traffic uh, so that they are trusted by the devices inside mm. and the devices inside encrypt the traffic for the firewall, which yeah. then decrypts it and re-encrypts it for the internet. And that way they can do the application inspection. That The problem with that though mm. is that is very time consuming and yep. processor intensive. So they're not the fastest of things, but they, they can provide you better insight than the yep. other two lower layer firewalls. Yep. It's all, always that, that, that trade-off, right? Per, yeah. Performance for, for speed. Yep. I mean, like Palo Alto Networks would argue there, there is no trade-off, but in the CSSP exam world, you know, uh, right. the test makers are very clear that there is a trade-off, you know, and uh, if you needed to pick, you know, the most expensive one or, or the one that's going to use the most resources, we're typically talking about the, the ones that operate higher in right. the stack, especially at layer seven. Yep. Uh, Joe, seems like you are really good and you're able to wrap your head around some of these technical concepts. So I look forward to what happens in the next domain. We talk a little bit more about, you know, identity access management, a little more abstract, a yeah. bit more uh, con conceptual. I got to get to the midterm first. That's right. That's right. And we'll <laughs> talk about the midterm next time on Learning Layer. So Joe, keep up the good work. You are halfway there. <laughs>